Hello everyone, welcome back to a brand new Souls RNG tutorial video and today I'm back after a long hiatus to give a video that a lot of people have actually asked me for and that's tips on how to make auras. Now that I've taught you how to make them, it's time for me to show you my best tips to make them good. Let's start off with number one, which is do not add too many distinctive elements to your auras. One thing a lot of auras suffer from is way too many elements to focus on. The best auras are always the ones that have simple ideas and simple executions. Even if there is multiple layers and there's a lot of emitters, usually the best ones will be the ones that can combine those emitters into one big idea rather than multiple different elements in one. For example, there is my precious jeweled aura, which has a lot of elements to it, but at the same time, the focus is only on the diamond and everything else is built around it. So it does not have too many distinctive elements. Everything in the aura is centered around the character and around the diamond. The moving stars, the bottom aura, the atmospheric auras are all related to the character and diamond. So here I'm making an example of what not to do. As you can see, there's already two emitters that have distinctive colors and do not blend in with each other at all, which gives you two big eyesores to look at. Now I'm going to add a third emitter, just so you can see what it's like for it to be even worse. None of these actually blend together, which just makes it bad for an overall aura. It feels like three different things. Tip number two is going to be to watch out for Z fighting. So in part one of the tutorial series, I mentioned there is something called Z offset, and that helps you prevent Z fighting and layer particles together. Here I'll show an example of what happens if you don't use Z offset to layer particles in the same spot. Now if we look here, you can see as we move our camera, one particle overlaps the other, but it's never consistent. The way to actually fix this is to add a Z offset value to our blue circle, so that is behind the red star. In this case, I made it minus 0.1, so it's minus 0.1 studs behind the red star, which is right now at 0 Z offset. So my next tip is actually going to be to take the time to pick a good font for your aura. I see a lot of auras with great effects, but the titles just bring them down because they don't match the aura or just look bad. Here I'll just quickly make an example title to show you what I mean by what you can customize in terms of fonts. If you haven't learned how to customize or make titles yet, I suggest you watch part 2 of my tutorial series. So if we just check down here in the properties of the text label, we'll see font style, which allows us to pick out a good font for our title. That's not the only menu, because you can actually click on add more fonts at the very bottom of the font drop down to pull up another menu. Here there's going to be even more fonts for you to pick from. There's already a lot of good fonts, so I suggest to just look through them and pick the one that fits the most. When it comes to actually adding one of these fonts, it's pretty simple, you just pick a font that you like and you click install. Then it's going to appear in your drop down menu for you to use. After you pick a font, there is a lot of things you can do to see what kind of styles would fit it. One could be to add a UI gradient or change the weight of it, like here. You can make it bold, you can make it light, you can make it medium. All will change how the text looks, and it's all about trial and error. Also don't forget, the stroke can play a pretty big part in the text. My next tip would be to add atmospheric particles to your aura, because no aura is going to be complete without any atmosphere. You can have many different elements, but usually the atmosphere is what ties it together. Let me make a quick example.
So as you can see here, we have a base bottom aura, and as you can see, something is lacking. It could be the fact that the bottom aura is pretty empty, but as you can see here, if I add some atmospheric particles around my character, it will instantly look better. So there is two ways to do this usually, and this is way number one, which is to add particles emitting from your character. Here, I'm making the transparency reach 1 over time, that way these particles fade out smoothly as they go from your character. You can make them consistently the same length of lifetime, or you can randomize it like I did here between 1 and 2. When making these kinds of particles, you want them to be subtle, so first of all, you have to make them match the color of the majority of your aura, so that they don't stand out much. You'd also want to adjust their size to something smaller than 1, because you want them to be small enough so that you don't notice them if you're just looking at the aura overall, but so they can still be seen when you're looking at them individually. A very important thing for atmospheric particles is to pick out an actually good texture to use, because if you just have the default texture, or something that doesn't fit your atmospheric particles at all, it is never going to look good no matter how many property adjustments you add to them. So as soon as I change the ID for the particles, you can see there is going to be a massive difference and it suddenly looks a lot better. Now as you admire this for a bit, I'm going to go into the particle emitter settings and disable them and you'll be able to see clearly there is a big difference between how the aura looks. Here it is a lot emptier, but as soon as I add them back, it looks a lot fuller. Now, the second way of actually adding atmospheric particles is to add a part under the character which will emit particles coming from the bottom. So usually you'd scale the part under the character to be about as large as your bottom aura if you have one. Now I'll make a few property adjustments. The main thing I'm doing here is I'm just picking colors and scaling the part to a size that works for me. As you can see, once I have finished adjusting all the properties, we have a nice looking bottom aura. Let me just disable the previous atmospheric aura that we added, and now you can see the difference. What was before an otherwise empty bottom aura and empty aura overall, now is just a bit fuller because we added atmospheric particles. The next tip on the list will be to keep the aura balanced, and I can't stress how important this is. You can have the best layering skills, but if your elements don't have an equal balance between them, it is never going to be a good aura. And let me just show you what I mean by that. As I'm adding multiple layers of the bottom aura here, as you can see, it looks a bit fuller, it looks a bit nicer. Now, you can keep adding layers to something, and as long as it still looks good, that's completely fine. I'm not stopping anybody from doing that, and I'm actually encouraging people to do that. Add more layers. However, this might get to a point where one part of the aura may seem a lot more saturated in terms of how many emitters and beams there are, compared to a different part of the aura, which makes it seem just a bit emptier in some parts, and we don't want that. You can see straight away that it looks a lot emptier without having any kind of body aura. So here, if I just go and re-enable the body aura we had before, you'll see an instant difference in terms of the fullness. While this is just a scrap aura, you can see that as soon as I added some particles to my character, it started to look a lot more connected together rather than being separate due to one thing being a lot more prominent than the other. That kind of connection is what you should be looking for between every single one of your elements in your aura, otherwise it just feels distinctive. This ties back into tip number one, and that just shows you how important that tip was. So the reverse is actually also true. If I remove the bottom aura here, you'll see it'll be a lot less balanced as it was before. It might look like a decent aura to you right now, but that's only because I've barely added anything to the body aura. 
As soon as I add more elements, the bottom aura is going to really feel missing. So my next three tips are all related, so I'll show them at once. When you pick the colors for an aura, there should be black and white contrast, there should be the same shade of color when you're using colors, and the most important part is to keep it simple. You will not believe the amount of auras I see in a Discord server just being submitted while having like five different colors used in the aura, all contrasting with each other and not in a good way. Here, I'll make an example color scheme. So we already have black and white, and then we're going to pick a base color to go with that. Black and white can go with absolutely any color, so feel free to pick whatever you want. Personally, my go-to is to just keep one color and to make different shades of it, but some people might want to add a second color, which is also fine as long as they match together in some kind of way. If you're an experienced aura maker, you can use more than just two colors, but if you're new, I suggest to stick to the rule that I just gave. It is not technically impossible to have an aura with three different colors or four different colors that all somehow match together, but my personal suggestion is to just keep it to only one or two. Now if you just look here, I am adding a few different shades of the color that I picked. This is technically a different color, but they all use the same shade, which is what I'm placing the most importance on. Here, I'll just show you an example of what some people do and what to avoid. So let's say somebody picked the color blue for their aura. Let me just make another cube with the color blue. And suddenly, they decided to add a different blue. So that's not too bad, because these colors kind of match. But then they add a third blue that does not match. And then they add a fourth blue that again doesn't match. While two of these colors might go nicely together, more than two just don't look good because they're all very different. The ninth tip of this video is going to be to not make your aura too large. And that's a mistake I see a lot of people making as well. Even now, I'd say the aura is slightly too large. You can see the character is a lot smaller compared to the circle below him. There's some auras that are exceptions to this rule, but this one is not one of them because it does not have nearly enough elements to be as large as it is. Here, if I just change the size to be 10 forever, you'll see the radius of the bottom aura. So this tip is actually not too hard to follow, and that's to just make your elements a little bit smaller and a bit closer together sometimes if you need to. Here straight away you can see a massive difference. As soon as we scale this down, it seems a lot more proportionate, including the aura that's actually on the character. They seem a lot more close in size. My final tip is a pretty simple one, and that's to not rush. All the things I showed in this video are a process. They're not something you're going to be able to get instantly and be able to follow instantly. So I just suggest to try until you're able to make something that you're satisfied with and something that meets these criteria. All of my auras were not made in a very short amount of time. They all took me at least a few hours to make. I think this will be all for this video, I really hope that you enjoyed these tips and that they're going to help you out in making your auras in the future. Sorry for being away for so long, I'm gonna try to keep it one upload per week so that I don't burn myself out, because the last thing I'd want to do is to stop making videos for you guys because I know that a lot of you rely on these videos to be able to make your own creations. Well, I guess I'll see you guys next time, bye!